welcome back to the anime news for the week ending July 19th, 2019. Starting with a fire broke out in Kyoto Animation's first studio building at around 10.30 a.m. on Thursday morning, leaving 33 confirmed deaths and 35 injuries. It's very sad. The fire is being investigated as an act of arson. A suspect was arrested who was said to have used a gasoline-like liquid to ignite several places in the studio. The connection of the suspect to the studio is still unconfirmed, but the survivors at the scene apparently reported he was not one of their co-workers. So, still coming in on that. I've heard different things from different news sources, so I don't want to confirm or deny. The first studio building is where most of the studio's mainline production took place. Uh, all three floors were engulfed by the fire, which took nearly five hours to put out completely. Yeah, the president of the animation studio stated that they have uh, frequently received anonymous death threats over the past few years, but do not necessarily link them to this attack. Um, hard, hard to say. Many people have shown their sympathy and support on Twitter, including Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, which is pretty impressive. Fans around the world, along with Crunchyroll, Funimation, and others, are using the hashtag PrayForKyoAni to express their appreciation for the company and to share favorite memories of the studio. Just absolute tragedy. You know, what, what can you say? It's, it's just, it's incredibly sad. What, what, what can you do? Um, anyway, moving on. Several new anime projects were announced recently, so let's get on with that. The creator and director of Akira announced at his Anime Expo panel last weekend that a new Akira anime project is in the works. The project is still in early development, but the president of Sunrise expressed uh, the intention to adapt all of the manga storyline in the new anime. That's um, six thick volumes. Mm. Wit Studio and Studio Trigger both announced uh, original anime to premiere in 2020. The staff of Studio Trigger's new work, entitled BNA Brand New Animal, includes Little Witch Academia director Yo Yoshinari and Kill a Kill writer Kazuki Nakashima. So let's just say I, most people are quite intrigued by that. Studio Wit's new conman comedy is entitled The Great Pretender, based on the theme of credit fraud. The newly opened website describes the show as a, quote, happy and comedic drama between worldly famous swindlers. Oh, no. Avex Pictures is developing a new mixed-media franchise about a four-girl virtual rap unit working to advance in their school for aspiring artists. Because, of course, you know, we need more of that. The project Kotodama Shoujo will include an anime adaptation as well as CD singles, web and radio programs, plus I'm sure merchandise out the wazoo. So look forward to that. Meanwhile, in celebration of their 60th anniversary, Weekly Shonen Magazine has launched a Twitter account that will answer submitted questions in the form of single shonen manga panels. Yeah, fans can direct uh, questions and requests for advice toward the uh, Twitter uh, account entitled Single Panel Advice Box. They will receive a response panel from one of ten shonen manga, including uh, Fairy Tale, Attack on Titan, and Nagima. Technically shonen, I suppose. The Twitter account can be found at Mitsuya Magazine. At Mitsuya Magazine. So, yeah. Um, that won't go uh, poorly. A professor at, uh, from Tokyo University of the Arts flew a life-sized jet-assisted version of the Mave Glider from Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind on Wednesday. Yeah, that's a Meave flying. It's amazing. The flight took place at an, an event of the Experimental Aircraft Association, where creator and pilot uh, Kazuhiko Hachiya also discussed the history of the glider. He's been working on this for a while. It began more than 10 years ago as the Open Sky Project. Currently, money is being raised on Indiegogo to fund continued touring of the glider, and it will make another test flight in Wisconsin, which will be revealed exclusively to the crowdfunding uh, backers. And then it, it'll head to Los Angeles in August for several appearances, and um, uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, another test flight as well, so 
looking forward to that. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, don't think there's a whole rocket engine in the back, though. Kazuki Takahashi, creator of Yu-Gi-Oh!, recently apologized for artwork posted on his Instagram containing a political message. Japan's preparing for an election on July 21st for members of its House of Counselors, the upper house of Japan's national diet. Uh, the art shows Yu-Gi-Oh!'s dark magicians commenting, and uh, I quote, The current administration is betraying its own country. And, quote, I really wonder if Japan's future will be okay, end quote, with Yu-Gi-Oh, um, uh, with Yugi himself holding cards that state, let's vote. Takahashi made a separate post on Instagram the next day, apologizing for using the characters to make a political statement, but didn't actually remove the original post. So, mm. and uh, to be clear, these characters are owned by more than just him, also like the manga magazine and things like that. So, you know, there are other effects to using that, but anyway. Finally, in some lighter news, Dragon Ball fans at this weekend's San Diego Comic-Con uh, smashed the Guinness World Record for the largest attempted Kamehameha attack. There we go. The move is performed on Wednesday by 786 people, including Goku voice actor Sean Schemmel, which is pretty cool, surpassing the previous record of 250. The event was part of the overall Dragon Ball World Adventure,